Welcome to another episode of the Love to Move podcast, where we take a look at all the definitions of the word move and tell you why we love them. On today's episode, we're looking at movement in terms of ADHD. The stereotype is that movement in ADHD is radical, jumping all over the place, going from thought to thought. There's a lot to be said for how neurotypicals consider ADHD. We're gonna be discussing what are the stereotypes, where people with ADHD might be masking, and in general, neurodivergence might be masking in normal society, and why we need to get away from that, and understanding the importance of diversity. Speaking of diversity, we'll also be touching on ageism, because my guest, Carol May, has a very, very strong opinion about how the elderly are treated in society. All of this, and so much more, from such a witty, lovely, disruptive woman, as she says it herself, please join me in welcoming Carol May. Yeah, <clears throat> so I am, I am the disruptive health coach because I'm a disruptive old woman. And in fact, I was a disruptive young woman too, to be fair. You know, I grew up in the 50s and 60s when disruption came kind of with the, with the territory. And so <clears throat> I am now disrupting the dieting industry and teaching women how to kick all of that stuff into touch along with the, I guess, uh, it's kind of the, it's the propaganda, but it's the stuff that we think and we think it automatically because we've been programmed to I want to kick that into touch and just reconnect with their body and go, hmm, do you know, actually, my body is healthy as it is. And I'm quite happy as I am. Very, very cool. So <laughs> we've had several guests on the show who talk about intuitive eating. However, we mm -hmm. haven't had anybody who also addresses ADHD and how a lot of those things work in the process as well, which I know you do. Mm -hmm. To clear the, the, the air or whatever it might be or any misconceptions for people who might still be lagging behind, could you talk on, on that difference that people might have where they go, I thought it was ADD, now it's ADHD, which one do we use? How, what's the difference? Is there a difference? Can you clear some of that up for people? Apparently, I mean, my sister has, um, has worked in this field for um, many decades. And so she tells me that it's just ADHD now. It's a bit like there's just autism there isn't Asperger's it, because Asperger's is an aspect of autism. Um, it's just where you are on the scale. So there is just ADHD. I think ADD used to be um, used to refer to girls and women because we tend not to be as physically active with it. But actually, it's our brain that is hyperactive <clears throat> and going the whole time. And um, which is probably where that thing comes from about, you know, women can multitask. And you know what? We ADHDers, well, we think we can. We're not actually that great at it. I'll admit to that. But we think we can multitask <laughs> because our brain is going all the time. So there is just ADHD now. Okay. I, you said uh, you kind of mentioned to it. Can you tell us more about your journey uh, with ADHD and how you've learned to cope with various things, especially mm -hmm. when it may come to diet or any other habits or this idea of I can multitask. I can, oh, mm, maybe I can't multitask. Uh, coming, kind of coming to the realization of, okay, I have to do things differently, but that does not mean I cannot do things. Exactly. <clears throat> um, gosh, I thought I turned this off. No, it's come on again. Flipping thing. Um, <clears throat> right. So um, <clears throat> there we go. Go away. Um, so I was diagnosed over 20 years ago now when it was, I didn't know any other women, adults who had been diagnosed. And this was purely because through my sister's work, she had noticed, and her work was with children, <clears throat> she had noticed that the parents 
also many of the parents seem to be struggling with the same issues or um, exhibiting the same ways of behaviour as the children. <clears throat> and this is in the very early days of research around ADHD when people still thought that it was um, to do with being naughty. And <clears throat> so she realized this. And so gra gradually, you know, she said to me, I think you should be tested. <laughs> so I went, okay. So I was tested. <clears throat> um, I, he wouldn't give a definitive yes, but he didn't say no either. What he said was, you definitely exhibit all of the traits, but you're also very depressed. <laughs> so it was like, <clears throat> okay, that kind of, so one was mask, probably masking the other one. Because what I've noticed since um, I gave the depression, the heave ho, that I have started exhibiting much more, many more of the traits. Um, that I think I was either masking or pushing down or just plain ignoring, quite frankly, um, because I had so much else going on in my life. And, and because back then, we really had, we, don't, we didn't have the information we have now about <clears throat> neurodiversity in general. And... <clears throat> One of the things I, I really, I kind of rage against is that it's classed as a disability, according to the state. Um, and I understand why that is. You know, it's all to do with money and, you know, giving schools the money for the children and, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> but I don't feel disabled. I, for me, it feels like it's a superpower because it's ADHD um, in me means that I have some superpower skills, which were a great when it is working with not just my individual clients, but being able to cut through all of the, I'm going to say this word, crap on the telly, <laughs> right? That we're di that's dished out by politicians, big pharma, you know, multi um, international organizations and stuff that is just propaganda. Somehow I can see through all of that. And <clears throat> so I'm a big picture person. I'm a, I'm a, yeah, let's, we need this person and this person and this person, and we'll create a team like that. And so if you think the likes of Richard Branson is ADHD, apparently, there are several really top um, international um, coaches who are ADHD. Um, <clears throat> you've got others who are autistic or somewhere on the spectrum. Um, it gives you a whole load of skills which other people, I'm not saying they don't have them, what I'm saying is that they don't use them. So, <clears throat> and it's taken me a long time to get to this point of realizing that the stuff that I was taught was negative is actually positive for me. Um, and that at my age, I can do, be, and talk about whatever the hell I like. Right. <clears throat> and I don't actually care anymore whether people like it or they don't. It's like, OK, you don't have to like me. You don't have to like what I say. You don't have to agree with what I say. It's called living in a democratic society where you have freedom of speech. Right. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> and as far as my eating was concerned, you know, I started dieting when I was 12 um, and you know I, I used to I used to use 
um, sugars and carbohydrates, cakes, biscuits, that sort of stuff, um, as my as my comfort food, my food that would mean that I didn't have to feel all of the uncomfortable feelings that I didn't know what to do with. Um, <clears throat> and, and then as I got older, I got kind of got into that habit. And what I could eat quite easily do was go all day without anything much to eat. But by the evening, I would be in the biscuit tin, in with the cakes, in with all of that stuff. Um, <clears throat> and I couldn't control myself. And then I would beat myself up um, at being so weak. Now I understand <laughs> that an ADHD brain, <clears throat> if it's medicated, now I'm not medicated, I use supplements. So I take a very different route um, for my brain. <clears throat> but I now choose to feed my brain in a way which means that I have energy all day, but I don't fall off a cliff at four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so I eat um, high protein and um, essential fats, so healthy fatty acids, <clears throat> um, healthy fat foods, if you like. Um, but I don't tend to eat processed carbohydrates. So pastry, biscuits, cakes, sweets, all of that sort of stuff. I tend not to eat that at all during the day because that is my brain's signal to shut down. And <clears throat> as long as I feed it enough of the protein, I do not have the cravings in the evening. And it made, it's, what it got me realizing was that I had had binge eating disorder. I had developed binge eating disorder because that's what I used to do. I used to binge every evening in the kitchen on my own. And <clears throat> I could say then I would beat myself up. But actually, that was my brain. It was the way my brain works. Because back then, we didn't, we didn't know anything about that, right? So I just, I just followed what the dieting industry was telling me, which was that I was weak, had no willpower, stupid, um, <clears throat> you know, all of that sort of stuff. And it became a huge negative part of my life, really. Um, but now, you know, my... You know, I, I teach my clients intuitive eating, but it's what it is intuitive eating for them. And intuitive eating for me is making sure I have enough protein and healthy fats during the day. And on the whole, that means that my brain functions well and I can work most of the day. And I feel... Wonderful. Brilliant. So many things that I want to touch on from all of that. Firstly, okay. um, a little a little more insight. Uh, so it's, it's very encouraging in a way, but unfortunately not the story for most people of how easily and quickly you got di we'll say diagnosed in quotes, uh, because they kind of said yes, but also we can't tell you. Um, kind of kind of a diagnosis. It was very interesting that you were even able to get to that point because even still, especially for women with those kind of diagnoses and then any diagnoses of being diagnosed on the spectrum or anything like that, it's just, no, you're just, you're, you're kind of whatever pretending it's something else, it's something different. I feel like there's a lot of gaslighting in that specific thing of getting that yes. diagnosis and it's not easy, which leads me to a question about you mentioned masking in a very different way, in a very interesting way of where you were saying that depression might have been masking symptoms of ADHD for you. Um, mm -hmm. For those that don't know, a lot of times in society, those that are neurodivergent have to feel that they, they, they mask for society purposes of, of, of those kinds of ways. 
Can you talk a little bit about, because I, I love that you're outspoken and I, I, I'm not looking to get you on a soapbox, but I feel like this might get you on a soapbox um, and that's totally fine. In terms of masking in society, when, when it comes to ADHD or other kind of neurodivergence, what do you what do you feel are the misconceptions when people go, well, can't you just, you know, just do it different? Can't you just suppress it? If you're already masking for depression, couldn't you just suppress it and mask it and be normal like everybody else? Um, what is your answer to that? Because, you know, I have my furious answers, but I'd love to hear from you. <laughs> Um, and I'd love to hear yours, actually, Stefan. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> I know um, what I, how I describe it is my daughter when she was little. Now she isn't diagnosed. I hasten to add, but <clears throat> for all I know, she could be ADHD, right? <clears throat> but she used to at school. <clears throat> she would hold everything in all day. So that meant being good, doing what she's told, being quiet, <clears throat> not rocking the boat, um, not speaking out. And then she would, as soon as the school bell went, she would come running out of school. She would launch herself off the steps and she would be yang, 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 yang. because she had to let it out somehow. <clears throat> and that's how I describe how women mask because we, we hold ourselves back. We don't say things for fear of upsetting people. We, I used to sit on my hands a lot <laughs> so I didn't move around too much, right? <clears throat> I don't cross my legs because then I'm always swinging one leg up and down. Yeah. And <clears throat> I used to think that was normal because my dad did it. Well, maybe my dad had ADHD. I don't know. Right. Because back then, who knew? <clears throat> um, but I thought that was normal. But now what I see is a lot of men will. They'll jig about, they'll move, they'll fidget, they'll do all sorts of things. Women, we tend to kind of hold ourselves in and try and stop ourselves from doing that. And. The worst part for me is, is trying to do that to my brain because my brain <clears throat> is like firing on all these off, it going like this all the time. And, and I want to go, oh, uh, yes, but, or oh, what about this? Or, and then I forget where I'm going or I go off down a rabbit hole and... You know, I was interviewed on a, on another podcast um, a, a few weeks ago. <clears throat> when she Vaughan published it this week, um, you know, she said to me, she said, I had to edit out a lot of the rabbit holes we went down <laughs> because <clears throat> she probably has ADHD as well. She's undiagnosed, but it doesn't matter to her um, because we did. We went down all these rabbit holes. Now you get you working in a place where you have to be more on point and focused don't stand a chance not a chance and <clears throat> so it's almost like you're corked up but the cork has to come out sometime mm -hmm. so for me it was like I, I would just, if I felt like that, I would just go and buy something nice in a shop to eat. Um, <clears throat> you know, all those kind of naughty things that you're not supposed to have. <laughs> okay. And because it was like a release for me. I think that I would like to think that the world has changed in the 
almost 68 years I've been on this planet, but I actually don't think it has when it comes to, well, a lot of things, but particularly um, equality for women, Mm -hmm. particularly in the workplace. And, um, you know, so I think that there's an issue with that. And then... What I also see a lot of is, and this is out in the, particularly in the coaching arena, are so many coaches that go, follow me, do it my way, and you'll succeed. Oh, I went off down those rabbit holes for years. And it never happened, never worked, right? Well, it doesn't work because... I have an ADHD brain and it wants to do its own thing. And what I've discovered is the ability to kind of stand up and go, well, not the ability, the confidence to stand up and say, uh, no, thank you. Don't want to do that. I'm going to do it my way. And increasingly, I'm meeting more and more women um, who are on the spectrum or diagnosed with something in the neurodiverse field who want to do it their way. Would you say that that's more, again, intuition? Is that what you're following? Is that what they're following? Is this uh, when you're saying it, doing it my way? Um, is that where you go, that just doesn't feel right for me? How do you figure out your way in those moments? Okay, so I, I think, first of all, it's it's how do you organize 